Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I'm Pat Sloan. This is Crazy Quilty March. Day number 17. Challenge number 17 on St. Patrick's Day. So what I put down there? St. Patrick's Day. And we have a little project. So it's something that we did for the Splendid Sampler. And I thought if you've not gone out and done this block, my friend Jane Davidson designed it. And I've got it on my blog post. So there it is. It is a cute little six inch shamrock block. And I am going to just give you a little tip here about it so that um, you can, you know, you can make it. It's got little pieces. So for those of you who aren't used to little pieces, let me just talk about that a minute. So let's get comfy for the few minutes we're here for the challenge. Uh, alrighty. <laughs> I'm excited. So first, before we, before we look at this, so who's Irish? <laughs> I always say the rest of you are Irish too. You just don't know it yet. Uh, if you go back looking through your history, you just never know. Uh, there's a lot of Irish ancestry through the whole world since they emigrated all over the place at certain points in history. Turns out Greg's family, our last name Sloan, is an Irishman's name. He was a, an Irishman that came to the U.S. many, 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 many years ago. And on my, we think on my grandmother, my mom's mom, uh, there's a bit of Irish in there. And if you ever saw a picture of my Nana, you heard me talk about my Nana. Remember the peppermints? Yeah, she was a redhead, fair-skinned redhead. And I tell you, she looked as Irish as Irish can be. So, uh, <laughs> I'm sure that there was a lot of Irish around somewhere in, uh, in her family. Um, we don't have a good background on that family, but maybe someday somebody will dig it up. So our little block Jane designed for the Splendid Sampler ends up six inches finished. Or, you know, so I am going to make it into a rug, mug rug. And I'm thinking I might eventually make two of them so that... Uh, Mr. Shipping Department can have his own because you know I'm sure he really wants a really cute little mug rug today. <laughs> he doesn't care but I do. So anyway I'm going to show you that and then I will give you some other progress or not progress. <laughs> so you have to find some little scraps. Luckily the pattern, oh first remember download your March calendar, if you haven't done it yet, it's under the video here um, in case you need it. We all need the, the calendar. Keep track. Remember, we're going to do this in April, so sometimes towards the end of the month, I'll have an April calendar. So the little clover, here is the pattern that you can download from my website. Link is under the video. So there's it's a little place. You just open it up, and there's all kinds of stuff that I write you so that you can find everything. So these are two inch squares and imagine that I have lots of two inch squares. So you work with two inch squares for these three, but then the rest are just scraps. And I decided, um, I had, where is it? <clears throat> I had a bunch of little scraps left over from the shamrock table runner, which I will give you status of that at the end here. So I thought I'm going to make the, this match that. Then I had, uh, went to scrap pile that I have that I haven't cut up yet and I had this piece of white so I'm like okay I can use that for the background um, <clears throat> but you see how it's all wrinkly we're working with little tiny pieces and so you want to be sure you have this pressed out and you might actually just want to go ahead and starch the whole piece if you have a chunk the pieces are cutting you're cutting one inch squares one and a half inch squares so they're tiny so go ahead and, and give this a nice press at a minimum, and I would starch it uh, to give it that stiffness for the little pieces. I'm also reducing my stitch length down a little bit. So I went down to, I went down to two inch um, length on the Solaris, a two on the Solaris. Um, I could probably go a little bit tinier, but, I, but the two worked really fine for, for this. So when I cut all the backgrounds, I mean, these are just sewing flips 
all of these. So after you sew and flip them, this unit is still a two inch, two and a half inch square after you put these on. You know, so you're chopping off the back parts. But I want to show you the stem because the stem is easy. <clears throat> Jane did it so that it is oversized and then you trim it down. So I will show you that part. You're starting with a strip. Here, let's just come down here. I can lay it on the table. Got uh... Okay, so you're starting with a, the green strip and then you have the two, it was a square that you cut in half. The directions, I'll tell you what to do. So these will be sewn on, you know, one side and then sewn on the other side so that you have this. So here uh, is the, the square that you're going to work with to make the stem. Now this has, is much too big. You can just see it's, it's much, much too big. So you also are going to cover the end with another square. Do you see how that is um, covered up there? So this one will be sewn across and then flipped like that so that you will get that uh, image. But I'm going to trim this to a two and a half to show you. Let me bring it in a little bit more. So what I have, uh, got the Ulfa, uh, this is, this is the navy Ulfa mats, which are super nice. Um, I love this navy color. If you have like a red, white, and blue studio, wouldn't that look pretty in it, like Americana? Okay. I digress. So on the ruler, I want to take the diagonal. Let me get this even closer down here. Oh, there we got a little better light. It was the camera was getting fooled by the lighting there. I think you can see pretty good now. Okay. So the diagonal goes right along the middle of the stem. You don't have to be crazy, but try to get it as close as you can to the middle. Then you're going to cut off. I'm taking this. Here is the two and a half to two and a half. So it is not out at the edge. I'm not trying to line up on this outer edge. It, I'm cutting sort of in the center of this. So the two and a half is sort of floating in the center. So we'll cut two sides, right? One, two. And then I will rotate this. And now I want to put my two and a half inch mark right at the corner. So the, the it's right at the corner here. And then I can do, now you would normally have that folded piece over there like the pattern shows you, but I'm not sewing that on right now. And then you have this. So your square is now all uh, tidied up to the right size. So it's the right size it should be. And in honor of all of this, I pulled out more greens. So these are what I pulled out to do the border around it because I wanted to do something sort of light. I didn't want a real heavy uh, border on it. So I put light colored, lighter colored strips so that the green shamrock really pops and that this is not like a dark frame. Now I'll show you uh, on my blog post also when you go over there. Uh, Jane did two different mock-ups that showed you this block and repeat, which is really cool. So that's how I got this effect where I did really light strips and then did the darker, darker squares. Um, all right. I also, I wanted to show you two other tools that I think, uh, if you have not gotten a wool mat, you really should get one. This is one of the small ones. So if you wanted to just get a little one and try it out, it will really helps with keeping your blocks pressed really flat. And then I still have the discount on the mini Oliso irons. So if you, this one's not on, uh, I don't have it plugged in, <laughs> but if you, I'll leave that link there too. So that'll be, that'll be over there for today. All right. So let me just give you a fast little update on my shamrock table runner. It got to be uh, everything but the stem stitch. So today, there it is. So today I will do the stems, yay. And then I think after the stems, there we go. I will uh, put, I decided I wanted to put another, I wanted to make it just a little bit wider for my coffee table. So I'll put 
I think I cut it one and a half. Yeah, one and a half inch border all the way around it. It is not going to be quilted for this year, but the top is done. And so I'm happy about that. So today my goal will be to stitch the, uh, the stems down and to get that on there, to get the a little border on there. Okay, so for our challenge today is to make a little shamrock coaster. Yeah! <laughs> If you just wanted to make the shamrock itself, you could just put a border around it and then bind it. You know, if you didn't want to put the extra, the, the offset like this. But when you see the offset, um, I could just do a whole quilt like this. I think it'd be super cute. Also, thank you over so you can visit Jane Davidson, my quilt Jane, my buddy that I did this fun of sampler books with. She's an Australian designer of amazing skills. So I'll link you over to her store so that you can just see the kind of work that she does. She's such a sweetie. <laughs> just a great, great person. All right. Thank you very much. I love you on St. Patrick's Day. I hope that you are wearing green and that you are, uh, I don't know, talking with an Irish brogue today. I'm not sure I can, but uh, I might, might practice that a little bit later. <laughs> All right, folks. I love you. See you later.